to Six Strings and Things, a guitar adventure. The place for all things guitar and gear. Here are your hosts, Chris, Jesse, and Robert. Welcome to Six Strings and Things, a guitar adventure. I'm Chris. With me tonight is Jesse. Hello. All right. And Robert, as usual, is self. Uh, in somewhere <laughs> neverland robert's neverland, neverland. <laughs> we really need to update this the, the intro to the show so you're probably wondering where's this robert guy why does he never on the show he's yeah. like the mystery guy yeah he's like our version of snuffleupagus you know yeah yeah our imaginary friend <laughs> it's sort of like the, the, the it's almost like the joke of the show right i mean it's like everybody <laughs> there's only two there's only two hosts 90 percent so, of the people out there going i don't get the joke <laughs> yeah i know i know yeah but you should, should go back and watch our catalog or listen to our catalog. You'll hear every once in a while there's this third guy that shows up. <laughs> so anyhow, uh, if you like what you hear tonight, please click subscribe or like the video on YouTube. Uh, leave us some reviews on iTunes or on YouTube. All that's very helpful. Let us know what we're doing right. And uh, if you think we could be doing something better, let us know. And Questions, if you have, comments. Yeah, show topics. Please, please let us know. So uh, Jesse. What have you been doing? So, um, listening to a lot of Joe Pass, actually. There's a lot of oh. Joe Pass out there. And um, kind of getting into, the, again, getting into the bluesy slash jazzy stuff. Um, but then got a detoured into, okay, jazz guitar players. Mm-hmm. And um, so, uh, and Joe Pass is the one that, like, really speaks to me. He was just awesome. And there's some good stuff out there, too. He died in, in 94. But there was some stuff there in the last few years with him in, like, seminars and whatnot. Um, just teaching sort of like jazz master class, you know, while doing like a little mini concert. And uh, the guy's just phenomenal. <laughs> so uh, not that I will ever be able to play like that, but um, it'd be neat to get into a little bit of that chord melody thing because mm-hmm. it's just pretty, you know. So Oh, absolutely. Um, so as far as actually working on stuff, uh, uh, still working on a straight note chaser, a little bit of uh, A train, um, nothing really in the rock thing. So that's about it. Yeah. How about you? Oh, excellent. Yes. Well, uh, see, you've done stuff this week. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Well, yeah. I've done I've done more too, but we'll get into that in a bit. Oh, okay, sure. Yes. But not practice. It was different guitaring. Okay, cool. Yeah. And <laughs> yes. So uh, let's see. A couple days ago, several days ago, I went and bought a whole bunch of picks. Awesome. And so I thought we'd talk about that too later. Picks are um, good. It's our picks. Yeah. Cheapest way to change your sound, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> hey, 35 cents a pop. You can't beat that. <laughs> Plug in. That would change it. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's true. That's, that's not good. So, um, so, other than the picks, uh, I've been working on two songs as of late. Um, going back to Pride and Joy, just trying to get that intro down and sound as much like Stevie in terms of that shuffle with that hitting the strings with the up pick uh, uh, on the upbeat just to try to get that Texas shuffle down. Yeah. It's a, it's, it's a process. You know, it's a funny thing and I'm not to interrupt you. So keep that thought, yeah, but, no, but you know, he had a heavy hand and yeah. he used 13s and <laughs> it really comes across. It's like, and, and especially in that, I mean, it always, it kind of flavors everything, but in that heavy, you know it's like it really comes across and i don't know if like normal people with normal hands and and lighter strings ever really can get that sound you know yeah i just want to get the rhythm down and so that i'm when i'm when i'm coming up i'm with a sound that i make is not necessarily like him but as clean as his sound is oh yeah because it's a real snap that you know um and so i've been working on focusing on coming up on the g string like uh the um, tab I have has coming up on the bottom three strings uh, or top three strings, excuse me, mm-hmm. top strings. And I'm like, oh, okay, let me spend isolate the one string and not be so really critical about what I'm doing. Cause I'm sure if he would have asked Stevie what was going on, he's like, he'd probably be like, don't worry about the upstroke, man. It's all about the down, you yeah. know, and it's just the thing that he does probably not even thinking about it. It's just what he does. Yeah. Um, so working on that, I'll probably work on that for the rest of my life, you know, and that's fine because something to work towards. And then, uh, decided on a, on a whim a few days ago to start working on the acoustic version of Layla. Oh, excellent. Yeah. On the electric guitar. Yeah. I've been playing it on the acoustic as well, but that's a fun 
little thing. I've been working on the intro. That's a fun little thing to play. Yeah. Um, right now I've got all the notes down. I need to work on the rhythm, which I, uh, I have found that with YouTube, and I think I might have mentioned this on the show before, you can slow the video down to like half or quarter speed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's a great way of slowing the song down to get yourself, you know, trained with what's the particular rhythm of the of the song. Uh, I like that a lot. I know you can do the same kind of thing with VLC. If you have a laptop running, you can slow down with VLC as well. Mm-hmm. YouTube, it's just though, nice to do it right in YouTube, you know? Yeah. I, I wish, though, that they had that functionality baked into um, the iPad version. Oh, they don't? No, they don't. So if you listen to Google and you like to play, if you work at Google and like to play guitars and listen to our show, this is my formal request. Yes. I'd love the uh, app, iOS app, Android app. I'd love them both to have this slowdown feature. And while we're asking, uh, can we get like the 0.75 speed as well? Oh. Sometimes would... half speed is just a little too slow. Yes. For my ADD ness. And <laughs> it'd be nice to be slower, but but kind of at three quarter speed, you know. Yeah, when I was working on the solo for Black uh, Black Sabbath uh, Iron Man, uh, I got half speed down. And I was like, you know what, I've got this pretty good. But that half speed to full speed, that was a heck of a jump. Yeah, especially so, on a solo like that. So, yeah, I so three quarter is good. I think that's a great idea. So Google, please. Yeah, and I think VLC lets you do it in like I don't know tenth of a you know, like point nine point eight, whatever you want, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it's just for me, it's more convenient to have my uh, tablet than a laptop. Right. Because I have a little tablet stand. You put the tablet in. It's like a music stand for tablets. And it's just it's just convenient right there. Yeah. Although I'll say I, I, I know there's VLC for Android. I don't know if it does the speed up or the slowdown trick. Oh, I don't yeah. know that. I'll have to look into that. Yeah, I don't either. Uh, I think there's a VLC for iOS as well. I just don't know if it. Does that function? Yeah, I know a lot of it is stripped down, so who knows? But yeah, we'll look into it and we'll answer the question then. <laughs> yes. And, and, you know, with um, at least with a laptop, you know, you can always boot it up. And while it's booting up, if you don't have a solid state drive, you can always uh, warm up, you know, get right. your fingers warm while you're waiting for the thing to boot up. If you don't have a solid look- state drive, why not? <laughs> I, I, I'm pretty sure that my my uh, my one laptop takes about two minutes to boot up anyway. Oh my. So yeah. yeah, yeah, it's showing its age. So um, it's a good time to warm up until you can get the, the other things going. Yeah, with the software. Mm-hmm. So uh, those are the two, I guess, big things I've been doing this week. Uh, so why don't I pass the ball back to you and let's talk about your other guitar things going on. So, well, I have a couple dates first off. Oh. So th- this date or this fortnight in guitar history. Oh, so great. I, I have a few. Uh, Freddie King, born uh, September 3rd, 1934. That's All right. Good. Buddy Holly, for you 50s kind of people, uh, September 7th, 1936. B.B. Um, King, uh, September 16th, 1925. Um then we have uh, Jimi Hendrix died on the 18th, and that's bad news, of course, um, 1970. And this one's interesting, and here's my great segue. eBay was born. <laughs> oh! <laughs> September 3rd, 1995. And uh, you may not have noticed this, but the guitar right there behind <laughs> me is not actually the baby you know. <gasps> this is its clone. <laughs> the it just, came already. It came, well, it was only from Jersey. And um, wow. so for those of you in audio only land, I'm going to come back. For those of you in audio land, this is a, uh, a Court M800, Korean made, isn't it pretty? It's a cherry sunburst, pretty much the classic um, flame maple sort of Les Paul standard thing that we're all used to seeing um, in a fully hollow body uh, body that's pretty much a PRS sort of shape. Um, but fully hollow. So it has a really nice resonant... I mean, that's almost an acoustic guitar, you know? (laughs) Wow. And one of the nice things, one of the reasons I was looking at the Korean-made ones, um, I have a a beater red version of this thing um, that's just... I didn't want to put any money or too much effort into it because it's pretty beat up. It's got some big chunks in it. Um, But I noticed that it it was also Korean-made. Um, and they stopped making them in Korea and started in uh, China, Indonesia around 2007, 2008, I think. 
And, but these are much more resonant than the, the later ones. Hmm. And so I'm like, hmm. So I want one of the more, you know, resonant ones for a backup because they're getting harder to find, you know. And, well, you can always go get a new one. But, again, the old ones. So Yeah. yeah. And it's in great shape. Um, pack, guy packed it really well and everything. So, yet again, good eBay score. Good luck on eBay, you know. It's got, like, Amazing. one little ding in it. And uh, that's about it. Now, so, was, the, was the ding advertised? Uh, he's just said excellent condition. So I said, so what does that mean exactly? I said, okay. fretware, are there any dings, blah, blah, blah. He says there is one. And then he actually emailed me a picture. Okay. Um, and, uh, and so it was uh, – I said, yeah, that'll do. You know, in the back, it was no big deal. Yeah. So now I'm going to – I don't know what kind of pickups I'll put. I'll, I'll listen to these. These have a Mighty Might pickups in them that um, the people who are not like pickup brand crazy have mm-hmm. said, hey, I was surprised. I thought these pickups were really good. Um, they're kind of medium wines. They're not like, you know, distortion pickups or anything, which is good on a hollow body. <laughs> right. Yeah, you don't want that. <laughs> um, but, um, yeah, so I'll see how they work and, uh, and we'll go from there. You cool. definitely have to change the strings, clean it up, you know, do that whole got a new guitar thing. Yeah, this is what you do. So, you, wh- when did it come in? Um, it just came in today. Wow. Yeah. So he shipped it yesterday. It came today. And you still went to work today. Well, I didn't know it was coming today. <laughs> I, got, I got the eBay thing. Actually, I got, I got two notifications. One saying schedule for delivery like the 17th or something next week. And then one saying it's coming today. So I'm not sure how that happened. Uh, um, so I got home and it's like, oh, it's here. That is a beautiful guitar. Yeah. And for those of you on audio only, it would be worth your time just to check out our show on YouTube. <laughs> Even if you like just fast forward to this part of the show and um, just check out the guitar because it's a beautiful yeah, guitar. Yeah, lovely flame mapleness. And you can't go wrong with that nice cherry sunburst, really. No. no. So I, it is, it's lighter than the, uh, than the other one. So I have two slightly different. Uh, yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> it's a fantastic sound. You know, you have, you weren't plugged in, and it sounded great. Yeah, it's really resonant. I mean, it has a um, an acoustic voice, almost like those, um, you know, those uh, the Ibanez Talman or the Fender uh, Strat acoustic. Did you ever see those? I just I was playing a Strat acoustic just the other day. Yeah, it's a lot like that. So it's not really a full bodied acoustic sound, but it's enough to work with. And my thinking is. Um, I want to put um, a soundboard pickup on it and see what that does. So then everybody has these piezoelectric pickups in their bridges now. So you get that sort of quacky pseudo acoustic thing. I mean, it's the acoustic sound that we're used to now because we hear it so often, but it's not really an acoustic sound, even when it comes out of an acoustic guitar. (laughs) Um, And so I'm thinking, I want to see what it does when I put a a soundboard pickup, you know, like one of those um, dots that you just kind of stick on the soundboard. And uh, see what it does. And if, if it sounds good, I'll just mount one on the inside and and there we go. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, I was um, – the other day I was at one of our favorite local guitar shops and they had uh, uh, the guy working there said, hey, we got a, new, a whole bunch of new acoustics. Go check them out. I'm like, oh, OK, why not? Not a huge acoustic guy, but why not? Mm-hmm. And I was playing one of those uh, – this Fender Strata acoustic uh, jollies and they, they were – it, I was surprised at how good it sounded mm-hmm. as an acoustic guitar. And, of course, you can plug in. It's acoustic electric. But right. uh, I was really impressed with the sound of it because considering the body was thin and it didn't have that big, you know, like you think of a dreadnought that has this big right. body or whatever. It's nothing like that at all. Um, but uh, very, I was pretty impressed with it. They're really um, good for like like campfire jamming or something like that. And what's nice about them too is they have a – well, they have an electric neck. It's actually a bolt-on strat neck I think. And uh, or very similar to it, so it's easier to play than the typical sort of acoustic. You know, mm-hmm. I think that's why they string them a little with little lighter strings than typical as well, and probably that contributes to the thinner sound as well. Sure. But again, once you plug them in, that uh, that piezo sound is pretty close to what you get out of a piezo equipped acoustic anyway. So. Right. Right. Yeah. Once you plug it in, it I guess matters a little less. So, all right. Cool. Fantastic. Yeah. So I was at the. Uh, our favorite local uh, guitar shop. I I did not walk out with a guitar, which uh, was much to my wife's relief, I'm sure. <laughs> she was sweating um, the whole time you were there. Uh, yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm just like, it was one of those things where I, I, you know, I wasn't compelled to get anything, especially after the guy that worked there said, oh, we're about ready to have some really cool fenders come in in the next uh, few 
uh, weeks. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, well, I don't think I'd want to spend my money now if I even if I had the money to spend it. You know, I, right. But uh, I messed around with some bass guitars a little bit, and mm-hmm. messed around with some, you know, some of the electrics, and because you're at the guitar store, you might as while you're there, you might as well. Oh yeah. And so, but the whole reason I went was to buy some picks because I was working with my guitar instructor earlier that week, and he was making some comments about how he had a different kind of pick than I had, and how you know strumming and how the pick was interesting, and also. While playing Pride and Joy, he was talking about, you know, to him, it sounded like almost like um, Stevie Ray Vaughan's pick was about to fail. That's what helps give that really cool sound. Yeah. And so the impression that he had is like he was driving the pick to the limit. Right. Uh, which, of course, if there's 13s on the guitar. That's true. You know, all but my really thick three millimeter picks are going to struggle probably with uh, with that. But anyway, uh, so yeah, I've been mostly playing with two and three millimeter, predominantly three millimeter picks, which are basically bass guitar picks yeah. for a long time because I've been doing a lot of lead and I liked how that pick did not respond. Mm-hmm. Right? There's no flex, there's no bend. Right. But as I've been playing with some strummy stuff, you know, and, and doing some reading, I've noticed that a lot of times people are using smaller gauge picks. Yeah. So I went out, bought the Spectrum, spent $3.50. A Spectrum of Plectra. <laughs> yes, Spectrum of Plectra. And I started all the way down at 0.46 millimeter. Now, the thinnest was 0.38. So we're and talking. That, and that fell apart in your hand, so. Uh, no, it's, <laughs> it survived a couple rounds of The Gambler, you know, by Kenny Rogers. <laughs> nice. Uh, it's still going. And I see I bought like a 0.58. I bought uh, a 0.88, I think I bought a 0.73, uh-huh. uh, a 0.96, and a 1. I really doubt there's much difference between 0.96 and 1 millimeter, but I figured, you know what? They make them. <laughs> I'm going to buy it. It was 35 cents. Right. Sure. And then I went up to, uh, I think, a 1.14 and a 1.5. So I just bought, like, I bought, like, I think I probably bought about 10 picks. I'm probably forgetting a few of them. I bought multiple one millimeters because there were different brands, and one was nylon, and one was called a star pick that had, like, a hole in it. Oh, for uh, gripping it, yeah. I, I, I guess. And I tell you, for the strumming that I've been working on, I have really been gravitating towards that 0.58. And okay. even the 0.46 a little bit, but the 0.58. And when I've been playing Pride and Joy, 0.58. Really? Yeah. Now, when I'm playing like uh, lead stuff, there's no way. I'm oh, gonna play you it. just can't control it? Yeah. yeah. That, that one millimeter I'm starting mm-hmm. to grow on me. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So the thinner picks, I've noticed brighter sound, especially when strumming. Yes. They have that click to them. Yes. And at 0.46, it's almost like putting a baseball card in a bicycle wheel. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> it is really clicky. That that's a good uh, yeah, that's a good analogy. Yeah. So the the noise that the uh, listeners heard for the past couple of minutes was me getting my picks out of my little Sucrets box, uh, just because I want to. I don't remember how the thicknesses go. So like while you were t- describing, I wanted to. Okay, yeah, okay. Now I get that feel, you know, sure. and. Um, yeah, so that's true. One millimeter, that's that's actually thinner than I would have thought even for like, uh, you know, lead. But um, yeah, I guess. Yeah, it's really weird because sometimes it's like you just want something a little different, you know? And so I use pretty much the same picks as you. I use a two millimeter version of the Big Stubby. Is that what you're using, the three? Uh, yeah, I've been using the threes, Big Stubby threes. So these are some kind of poly something plastic. Um, they're not the typical celluloid or, or Delrin or any of those. So um, they wear a bit, but they're really stiff. And uh, so I agree with you. That's where the control is. That's why I like those as well. But sometimes I like to go to like a thick, and I don't know what, what it is, probably about a two millimeter anyway, but like a celluloid or something. And there's also these little um, jazz picks that are like tiny. You ever see these like little, they're like small teardrop things? Yes, I have a few. I have, I, 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 let's call them a little stubby. Oh, well, they make a little stubby, but, but I have like a Donald Ob Jazz 2 or Jazz 3 or something like that. And they come in like a two millimeter thick version too. And sometimes it's just kind of neat to sort of play with a different thing. Although in the end, I always come back to those big stubbies. Yeah. Just I because. Don't, I don't like the real small ones. I just, it doesn't feel right in my hand. Yeah. 
Yeah. And I like the picks to be sort of, I'll hold this one up, this shape for those of you that are on. The standard um, teardrop guitar pick. Yeah. The yeah for an audio, it's a standard teardrop. I've, I saw some while I was at the guitar shop that were more triangular. Mm-hmm. And I bought one – actually, I bought one of those a while back and it never really caught on with me. And when you say triangular, do you mean like it's a bigger actual triangle or do you mean the tip is just like a sharper? Yeah, bigger actual triangle. OK. So the, the, the place that you hold is wider. Right. Um, you hold it with your whole hand. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's just, it, just thinks, it, it just didn't feel right when I was playing with it. And I, I could see why people would like it. It just wasn't for me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I will probably move back towards the the two big stubbies twos. Mm-hmm. I think I'll find now that I've been using these thin picks. The threes are probably going to be too thick. Yeah, I, I think I'm gonna and the twos. I think I'll use for lead. Plus, I have this 24 bag of uh, this bag of 24 twos that I ordered accidentally on Amazon, thinking they were threes. <laughs> And so, so, yeah, so, <laughs> so I have one. I was like, yeah, I could have returned them. But the truth be told, I was playing twos before I was playing threes. And I figured someday I might come back to them. So why not have a bag of 24 picks laying around? I mean, <laughs> what, yeah, it's we're guitar players. We have picks laying around the house. It's just oh, play it is. Well, my Sucrets box is just for the people who, uh, who are on video. I'll show you. So this has all these different – and this is just a mishmash of stuff. I have um, like my bag of like stubbies – are separate. <laughs> I have a big bag of those too. And there's just all kinds of, you know, every once in a while you'd throw something, especially when you're ordering from, you know, mail order or something like that. It's like, Oh, I need a couple bucks to get up over the free shipping. <laughs> it's like, well, those picks look interesting. Get a half dozen of them, you know, or whatever. And so I've, yeah. Oh, sorry, go ahead. So I've gotten ones that have like a plastic sort of handle, but the pick part is actually just a wire. Huh. Yeah. And I've gotten ones made out of like aircraft aluminum. And I had a, they used to make one called Hot Licks, which was made out of a copper alloy, which was really springy. And I liked them a lot, except that as they, well, one thing, they wore your strings pretty good. I bet. But the other thing is, as the pick itself wore, it got really sharp. And I actually cut myself with that pick before. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> so, um, and then you could try like the flattened penny that you get. You know, you go to the Empire State Building, you crank through the machine, you get this flat whatever the thing is. Like you can use that because like Brian May plays with a like a sixpence coin, and Billy Gibbons played with a like a peso coin. You know, so <laughs> there's precedent. You know, and I've seen people like these like hard plastics. They just like cut like it looks like a, a plastic shop, and the thing is just really thick. You know, like uh, yeah, it's, yeah. It's it's really you know settles down what sound you want, what feels comfortable in your hand. And what the cool thing though, is that, you know, ways of changing your sound, there's the obvious things of like, you know, buying a new guitar or buying a new amp, but let's face it, you know, there's only so much of that you can do. And I know I've got this wall of guitars behind me, but you can't, you know, it's, it's expensive to buy these things all the time. Mm -hmm. A pick is 35 cents. It has an impact on your sound. It's not, doesn't require the effort of replacing pickups. Mm-hmm. which you know soldering and so on and so forth so uh yeah it's just a quick and uh you have very little invested that's true it makes a lot of sense actually you just go blow five bucks on a bunch of picks at your local yeah. guitar store and because you just never know what might come up yeah and most of the guitar stores that i've been in you know have like uh these little boxes with drawers they're almost like electronics components boxes right, right. Mm-hmm. there's packed full of picks you know one type of pick in each drawer just go through, open them up, take them out. And, uh, I got some nylon picks. I got some other, you know, harder plastic picks and just try them. Yeah. Yeah. Cause yeah. they all feel different. They all respond different on the string. Sometimes they have like just, you know, it sounds pretty good, but there's a weird peculiarity. Like, like the aluminum one was neat in that it didn't move at all. So it was really, you know, controllable, but the finish of it, it always kind of had this weird, scrapiness against the string that the, that the copper one didn't have but you know and so it's like I don't know maybe somebody would like that but I was like Ugh. right. so it's funny how you just yeah just try everything I mean for the cost of it now some of these were, are not 35 cents <laughs> right, right. aluminum one's like a buck you know? yeah, right. but so, still 
what other guitar accessory are you going to get for a buck? Exactly so. <laughs> <laughs> That's fun to play with for sure. Yeah, I, I think one of these days we'll have to take one of our extended trips to a guitar store and then just come back with a bag of picks. I think uh, my <laughs> wife will be very confused. Like, you know what? Can you drove two hours for a bag of picks? I'm like, yeah. Yes. What else would you do? Yeah, so. <laughs> the quest for hey, picks. I could say, well, next I'll come back with a thousand dollar amp, you know? <laughs> 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 So, all right. Well, let's see. What, what have we covered today? We've got guitar picks, your new guitar. We've done some practice. It's been a pretty good uh, guitar fortnight, I think. Plus, yeah. we found out about who was born and who had passed away as of late. So, I think we've got ourselves a show. Wonderful. All right. Well, folks, uh, again, if you uh, like what you heard tonight, please click like or subscribe. Leave us some feedback. Suggest us some show topics. You can uh, tweet us at SST Show. Uh, you can check us out at JesterCat.com if you'd like to see more about uh, this show or some of the other shows that we have. And until then, everybody, just keep picking and grinning. Six Strings and Things, a guitar adventure, is a production of JesterCat Studios. You can see more about this and all other JesterCat shows at JesterCat.com. You can also email the show at SST at JesterCat.com or continue the conversation on Twitter at SST Show. You can follow Robert at RS Macy, Jesse at Jester700, and Chris at CW Culp. Thanks to Jesse for playing and recording our intro music. 